what makes us Earth scientists a little nervous is we're on a finite planet. The Earth is not growing infinitely. It is not exponentially getting larger, in, uh, particularly uh, in key resources, in uh, space for people, in food production. And so what I really see is the, the possibility of a serious collision course uh, that may develop in, in your careers and that you may actually have to solve. Uh, because my uh, generation isn't doing very well at uh, uh, making first steps ourselves, in that uh, we have this capacity for very possibly exponential growth in things like information and knowledge, but we do not have the capacity for exponential growth in economic development and consumption of resources and in food production. And so we're going to have to come to a higher order uh, strategy for humanity in uh, probably in the next few decades. So we really think that there isn't uh, enough time for another few uh, generations of business as usual. I think your generation is going to have to wrestle with this about how can we continue this incredible development of uh, computing and information, and how are we going to square that with a finite planet where we are seeing considerable amount of uh, um, evidence that uh, we're wearing the place out. And so this is, um, this is going to be a challenge that uh, I, I wish we had more momentum on uh, right now, politically. I don't think our political system is serving us well on this topic at all at the moment. And I'm, I'm afraid that uh, this is going to need to be a bottoms up revolution where the people are ahead of the government and figure out what needs to be done and just go start doing it. Uh, the problem that we're going to have to recognize is this is ultimately a global endeavor. And so we have to get all the other countries in some fashion or other to agree to and commit to a similar uh, trajectories of, of activity in particularly decarbonizing energy. You know, we figured this out for water pollution back when I was your age. There was a, a famous situation where the Cuyahoga River in Ohio started on fire. A river started on fire because there was so much pollution. And that was, that was really the classic tipping point, I think, for the American public to just not put up with water pollution anymore. And we now have spectacularly better water quality around the country than we did when I was your age. And so on a local basis, we have solved these kind of problems in the past. Uh, what we've now moved to, though, is a global basis where we share the atmosphere with the whole world. Uh, I like to explain to people that the air goes around the whole planet about once every two weeks. And we know that because when a volcano goes off, you can track the ash cloud all the way around the world. It takes a couple of weeks. And that really makes the point that it doesn't matter where the carbon emission takes place, anywhere on the planet we all end up experiencing it within a year or so, just from mixing of the atmosphere on a global basis. So we're all in this together globally, and uh, I actually am more concerned nowadays, not so much that we won't find technologies. I'm more concerned about what I guess I'll call global governance. Um, it isn't very popular around, uh, in a lot of American politics to think that we might have to take orders from some other country. And I, I, I'm challenged to that in my public uh, speaking all the time. And yet what, what I see is we've reached a capacity on the planet now where we have to start having strategic global goals and some sort of mechanism to make them happen. And right now that doesn't exist at all. 
The United Nations is incredibly toothless in making anything happen that's difficult. Uh, our current international treaties uh, are really very weak compared to what we have to come up with the, for the future. And so what I see as a challenge for your generation, and I sure hope you come up with some better ideas than my generation has, how do we develop this balance of independence of our country and yet some sort of collective global interdependence and agreed upon rules, and particularly with uh, 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 climate change and energy production and carbon emissions, you just can't escape that this is a global issue. And so I, I'm not sure how this is going to play out. I hope I live long enough to see us, us, humanity as a whole, turn the corner to see where we're going. But right now, I can't see it. And so something new has to emerge in how we uh, develop a, a global governance structure, uh, rules, rules of, uh, of uh, uh, each country's uh, activities that are widely supported and uh, then followed. Because if not, we're going to really hit the wall on a planetary basis in uh, population and resource consumption and pollution. Uh, you know, we're, we're well on our way right now, and the trajectories of those are exponential in a way that can't continue on a finite planet. It's certainly a tremendously interesting time to be your age. When I was your age, there, there was the old saying, don't uh, believe anybody over 30, and uh, you probably need to resurrect that, uh, that frame of mind. And I sometimes, when I see the resistance of people my age, in particular our political leaders, to do anything that takes any courage, I really think that the faster you all take over, the better. Uh, probably anybody my age, you should hand them a golf club or a fishing pole and say, please go away and don't come back. Because you've had your chance with this uh, uh, planet and uh, particularly from an environmental point of view, uh, you've pretty close to wrecked it and we better start fixing it. And, and so I, I really think uh, your generation has not only the opportunity, but really the, the, um, the requirement to get in a leadership role way quicker than normally you would be called upon to do, because my generation just doesn't seem to have the political guts to make some of the hard decisions to turn the corner in, into this uh, new world that we have to develop. The rest of the whole world's waiting for us. We are by far the biggest per capita energy consumer uh, by, all, uh, by all measures. And uh, they say, okay, you're the ones that are, are leading the problem. Uh, when are you gonna start leading the solutions?